Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifillah A question was asked which is very important and it's a common question as many sisters around the world uh, at times struggle to find good, decent uh, spouses as well as the brothers but many sisters because they don't have the same avenues often as men it's much easier usually in this uh, area. So after explaining her situation, as we've heard this question many times, she says, inshallah, I want to stick to the halal, so I don't want to go down the dating route, but I'm making so much dua, inshallah, and I know it will only happen when Allah wills, but I want to truly exhaust all avenues, and I recently was advised by a masjid staff of a Sunni masjid that I asked for help, that they said an imam can't be my wali in this case, my mom can be the go in between until I find someone, and when I find someone, then I can have someone appointed for me. I've joined marriage services, and there aren't any other marriage services, and only one replied a few years ago, but Qadr Allah, it didn't work out. I'm really stuck at the moment and tired of asking others, as I hate to be a burden on others, as I know mosque and imams are busy. Allahumma barak. So hence why I want to directly approach a brother I am interested in and wanted to seek advice on my situation and what the most halal way of going about this would be. I thought maybe handing the brother a letter with a brief message and profile and details about me and my email in which I would include my mother in the emails would this be permissible. Also, if a woman is interested in someone and is pleased with his dean and character and she knows their social media, can she send a message in public? expressing interest and in whether they would be interested to contact her email. Also, if I joined a matrimonial site, which I know many scholars say is haram, but I have my mother involved and only message to see if there's compatibility straight away. Uh, in any way, it was a question about advice. So there was a lot of other details, but not necessarily all necessary. Wilil al-Ham, the ulama, have dealt with these issues, and the fuqaha prior have dealt with these issues. And actually, I was having some difficulty, although I knew the permissibility, let's talk about it first and foremost, that it is permissible for a woman to present herself for a man in marriage, and there should be no shame in this, because we know the difficulties, but we know from the time of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam, this was the case, as some sahabiyat, they uh, presented themselves uh, as we're going to mention one Adilla uh, to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam for marriage. Uh, but this is from, uh, we'll talk about the details shortly. So first and foremost, it's permissible. So it's, you don't have to listen to any more of the video if you don't want. Uh, as far as a lot of these issues, like I said, the ulama have dealt with them. I don't know, uh, from what I've, uh, I've asked this question to some mashayikh, and so on and so forth as far as the marriage services. And there's no problem with that as long as you're not putting your profile picture up there first, as many sisters do. Usually sisters that are not necessarily uh, mutadayan like that are very strong in their understanding of the sunnah and practice of the sunnah. They're putting makeup on and no hijab and things like this. So it shouldn't be a place of munkar. So if a sister puts her profile up, alhamdulillah, there's no problem with that. And she should, of course, have a wali. Uh, another issue that you brought up as far as the wakil or the wali uh, appointed to be your wali at your masjid. I don't know why the masjid, they do need to take this responsibility because who's going to do this responsibility otherwise? Who's going to take this responsibility if not the imams, if not the uh, markas ad dawah or your students of knowledge. They need to take this responsibility. So this is a shortcoming that we have in our communities in the West because we don't have the same things, the same setups as we as uh, Muslim countries do generally and with strong Muslim families. So people have to step up to the plate. So this is actually an admonishment for those imams and those markas uh, of or dawa centers and others to step up to the plate and take care of this responsibility. And there's also... There should be responsibility, it should be a thing of responsibility that they should care for the concern of the sisters. 
in America, some of the communities, some of the larger communities, some of the larger Salafi communities have things in place. They have uh, people appointed who are wakils for the sisters, like all the single sisters. They have information about them and they have their own procedure for going through that process, which is a netma and which all the masajid should do. You need to have this in place. Um, and as we know from the fuqaha in the books of fiqh, they mention about if the, of course, the father is not alive or there is no, you know, grandfather and there's no uh, brother and there's no, you know, there's no one to be the, from the origin of being the wali who has that responsibility. If there's no one in place, then the imam becomes the uh, one responsible for that. So it would be, in our case, probably a, a masjid or a merkiz a dawah. Sheikh Salih bin Fazan also speaks about that in one of his uh, books. And so it's very important. And in other situations, if there's no situation, that sister can actually find a trustworthy brother because also we find that case uh, scenario often as rebirths. There might not be other communities that won't even take that responsibility. So in that case, a sister can tr appoint a trustworthy brother to take that uh, responsibility. Uh, a second point, uh, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your affairs easy and all the sisters and brothers who are in that situation who are looking for spouses to find righteous, uh, pleasing spouses to them that will be a comfort in them to the, in this life as well as the hereafter, amin ya rabbil alameen. As far as the way and means of doing so, there are many different ways. Obviously, it's not by showing yourself and doing anything which compromises your deen. So there, that's in a nutshell. So if you do it by a letter, if you do it by email, social media, uh, what have you, just be cautious and careful and make sure that it is someone you hopefully know something about them uh, before doing so. So this is uh, something which is permissible and you, there is no shame in that. There is no shame in that. And there's some other scholars and students of knowledge, they speak about this more in detail uh, about these issues. Um, as far as coming to some of the evidence, I was looking for probably the past 30, 40 minutes, looking in several books and trying to find uh, some strong evidence uh, without me trying to make istidlal, meaning me trying to look at the evidence and saying, yes, the evidence actually I was looking at was evidence, but we have been saying it instead of me. So one of the evidences and even I found, which is even more beautiful, Imam Bukhari. So it shows the fuqaha and Ahl al-Ilm wa Ahl al-Sunnah dealt with these issues over a thousand years ago even. Alhamd. Imam Bukhari, he has a chapter entitled Bab Hal al-Mar'ati and Tahaba Nafsaha li Ahad. This is beautiful. So he's got a chapter entitled, in Sahih al-Bukhari you'll find it, it's the chapter entitled is it permissible for a woman to give herself to someone, meaning give herself to someone in marriage? The answer, so he mentions then a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is a hadith, Hadathana Hisham an Abihi Qal, Kanat Khola bint Hakim min 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 la min la lai wahabna and fusihinna and fusuhunna. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Akhara hadith. So he mentioned the hadith of, of Khawla bint Hakim, radiallahu ta'ala anha, uh, that she was from one of the women who gave herself to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from what we learn from this, as the fuqaha mentioned, is that it's not permissible for a woman to give herself. What does wahab mean? This means to give herself without a mahar. So a woman can't say, uh, like in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which was for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only, to wahab nafsaha. She can't, uh, you know, wahab nafsaha. She can't, she can't do this. So she can't uh, give herself without a mahar. However, from this, Imam bin Rahimin, he mentions, which is beautiful, he said, وَأَمَّا 
عرض عرض المرأة نفسها على الرجل الصالح فلا بأس به سواء كان ذلك مباشرة أو بواسطة وليها. So we we'll just stop there. And then he gives an example. He also says كما عرض عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه ابنته حفصة 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 ابنته 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 حفصة رضي الله تعالى عنها على أبي بكر وعثمان رضي الله تعالى عنهما. So Ibn Uthameen, he mentions that there's no problem with a woman offering herself to a man in marriage, uh, to a righteous man in marriage. So, of course, you don't want to go just because, it's, you know, some women are amazed by brothers in the dunya and they still have that attraction. So they like the guy, his pants, well, back in my day, it would have been his pants were sagging and whatever else. And so she would offer herself. A lot of times the women would give tablik, you know, they would uh, give dawah to men. And a lot of times those marriages fail. So anyway, Ben Othamin, he mentions, he said, no problem with giving a woman offering herself uh, in marriage or proposing, in essence, uh, to a man who is righteous, who she believes is righteous, a good man. Uh, there's no problem with that, regardless of whether she does that directly or she does it through her wali. He mentions that. So that's a beautiful faida and takes a lot of relief off of us in our various situations. And then he gives an example. He said, similar to the way Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he gave his uh, daughter Hafsa, radiallahu ta'ala anha, offered to Abu Bakr and Uthman, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. So uh, this shows us and is some of the evidence that it is permissible for a woman to do this. And again, this is an issue around the world, many sisters, uh, we find you know, they contact the scholars or they contact students of knowledge from all over the world and they are looking to get married. So they're offering themselves or they propose and there's no harm in that. There's no harm in that as long as they keep the barriers of Islam. As far as your particular situation, you mentioned also about your father having passed and not having a wali and having your mother. So your mother can be involved in that process and helping you to find, obviously, uh, a mate and so on and so forth but however you need uh to have a wali and you should have a wali ta'ala in place especially so that way if you have a sitting that you're not sitting alone and so on and so forth and you uh observe the islamic adab and we ask allah the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil